Hi, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. I'm working on Lewis dot structures, and in this video, we're going to be looking at molecules that have multiple bonds. In other words, they have to perform either a double or a triple bond in order to satisfy that octet. So let's start with nitrogen, a very stable gas, and we're about to see why. I have two nitrogens. They each have five valence electrons for a total of 10 valence electrons. So make my bond, that's two, four. I like to go back and forth, kind of like two for you, two for me, two for you, especially when it's the same element. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10. Well, neither nitrogen is satisfied. So we've got to move some electrons. Now, some people might be tempted to move them over. Well, let's satisfy this nitrogen. Well, this leaves the right-handed nitrogen even more deficient. So when we have deficiencies, you don't move them from one atom to another atom. You move them between the two atoms. So now the left-handed nitrogen is finally satisfied, but the right-hand one still only has six. Fortunately, this little nitrogen has two more, and it can share some more. Put them between. Don't shift them over. Put them between. Now, both nitrogens have a stable octet via sharing. Uh, the general ABE formula is not meaningful if you only have two atoms. And so another way you could draw the nitrogen is like this with a very strong triple bond. That's why it's not very reactive, because it takes a lot of energy to break that triple bond. And so we would say that it has a bond order equal to three. Okay, let's take a look at this carbonate ion. Hopefully you know your polyatomic ions. You know what I say, if you don't know your polyatomic ions, you are. <laughs> so four carbons, three oxygens, they have six. Now here's something different. This time we have a charge in the upper right hand corner. That means something donated to electrons. And that's going to be from an ammonium ion, a metal ion, some sort of ionic bonding. Now, within a polyatomic ion, we have covalent bonds. Between a polyatomic ion and a cation, or in the case of ammonium and another anion, that's the ionic. So polyatomics are capable of both. All right, so we have uh, 1824. So make your bonds, two, four. You can use lines if you want. I use dots just to make sure you're able to count your electrons well. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Okay, so problem. This oxygen on the bottom has an incomplete octet and it needs eight. So we're going to come down and take two from mama and put it between those two oxygens. The other thing is because it's an ion, we have to have brackets and charges. I think of IBC root beer, one of my favorites. I love IBC root beer. Ions, brackets, charges. Right. And finally, some of you may have noted that this double bond could have been on the left oxygen or the right oxygen. And that is called resonance. And I'm going to talk about that in another video. So for now, we're going to leave this as a plausible Lewis dot structure. Uh, carbon is the center. I have three oxygens surrounding it. And there are no non-bonded pairs on the central atom. That's the only ones we're counting because those are the ones in our theory that we'll talk about in later videos that will help us understand structure. CO2. Carbon has four, two oxygens each bring six. So I have 12 plus four is 16. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 16. Okay, carbon satisfied, but neither hydrogen is. So we're gonna look to mama. She'll share some more. So now this one's satisfied, the center is satisfied. We still have one more oxygen that is not satisfied. 
So we're going to look to mama and she's going to share some more. So what we have is oxygen with double bonds to CO2. So you might like to draw it that way instead, which is just fine. So we each of these have a bond order of two. And this would be an A, B, 2 structure. Okay, one more that I think will be really, really helpful. And that gets us into carbon compounds. That's an area of chemistry called organic chemistry. And we have two carbons. And what we want to do, the hydrogens have to be on the periphery. So let's put those hydrogens on the periphery. Two carbons each bring four. Four hydrogens each bring one. We have eight plus four or 12 electrons to play with. So we're going to make our bonds. Remember, hydrogen only wants two electrons or one bond. Two, four, six, eight, ten. We have one more there. This carbon satisfied. All of my hydrogens are satisfied with just two, but this carbon is not. So the one that's satisfied and has that extra non-bonded pair will share and go to the middle. Now, I have X's here, but honestly what we can do is define this carbon as a center. So around that carbon, we have an AB3 because there's a hydrogen and a hydrogen and a carbon hanging off of it. And then we could separately define this carbon as a center, and it is also an AB3 generalized structure. Big boost when we get into talking about the theories of these structures. So hope you can join me then. Thanks for joining me now. Take care.